My name is Herman Blanco, and I work in the Emerging Payments Division of MasterCard. And within Global Platform, I'm the chairman of the end-to-end -end working group. As you may know, Global Platform develops secure chip technology across three different areas, the trust execution environment, the secure element, and also it provides system messaging specification that allows integration in between components. Um, I'm happy to share with you one of Global Platform's latest initiative, the end-to-end -end simplified framework. And this initiative is aimed at helping service providers deploy NFC services and manage them in the most simple and cost-effective way. And we have, over the past two years, worked in those guidelines and configurations to allow so. And the best thing is that we have actually done uh, these configurations without the need to create new specifications. So Global Platform has created its technology for more than 15 years. So the uh, members have been working on a big number of use cases. And thanks to that, Global Platform today is a very rich and powerful technology that provides a lot of options. Um, the technology is uh, service agnostic, and we feel that now the, there was a need to actually provide a layer of simplification. To deliver service providers self-contained configurations that would uh, cover Global Platform's technology end-to-end. -end. And this is what we've uh, done. So um, when you look at Global Platform technology, it spans ac across three areas. The technology of the secure element, how to manage the applications, how to load an application, how to create keys, etc. You have also technology for the handset or mobile devices, such as the trusted execution environment. And then you have the technology uh, that TSMs would use to interconnect uh, the ecosystem and deliver services. So what we wanted to do is to create an approach that would deliver a very specific solution for specific verticals. So for instance, if you wanted to create a solution to deliver payment services, you could very simply by answering two or three business-oriented questions end up with a self-contained configuration in a document that you could very simply send to your vendors and acquire those products, implement the products yourself, etc., etc. And this is what we have done. So we have created this vertical approach uh, to the secure element agnostic uh, specifications from Global Platform. We have actually started by addressing the vertical of payment services. And so we have also integrated business requirements from uh, other bodies, such as the GSMA and EMVCO, because we want to make sure that service providers not only find the simplest and most cost-effective way to deliver solutions, but we also want to make sure that it has the right uh, functionality and the right level of security. To help you better understand the reasons for creating the framework, I'd like to walk you through an example of payment services. Today, uh, payment services such as plastic cards for debit, credit, use standards and technology that has become very well known and we could almost say that it's business as usual. So a bank that wants to deliver a card to uh, one of their consumers, uh, you know, very simply uh, uses the services of a vendor and the consumer, um, the only thing they see is they receive a card by uh, post. And then in order to use its card, the consumer will need to go to the branch and get its PIN. So the process and the distribution channel is known um, and we could say it's uh, simple. However, today and tomorrow, we have the same consumer, we have the same bank, but we also have mobile handsets that are NFC capable and they have also a secure element. So the ecosystem will be different and the distribution channel will also be different. So I will walk you in more detail uh, on what is required to be able to deliver a service from a bank or a financial institution into the handset. Let's have a look at the ecosystem that you need to uh, create in order to deliver these payment applications. So uh, the point is to be able to deliver payment services from a service provider or a financial institution in the case of payment um, to the mobile device on the other side uh, that uh, has a secure element inside. So uh, you need to actually understand what are the capabilities of the secure element. 
basically the secure element provides the protection uh, of uh, your application and the data. When we talk about payment applications, we also talk about personal data and we also talk about cryptographic keys that will, will allow the processing of the payment transactions. So it is quite sensitive and we need to understand and make the right uh, choices when deploying this kind of services. So in the framework, we have actually provided a default configuration for the secure element, explaining what applications need to be installed, where, what keys do you need, and what mechanisms do you use to set up that secure environment and guarantee functionality, but also guarantee security. On the other side, you also have to install a user interface. Unlike plastic cards, a mobile phone provides the possibility for the user to interact through a graphical user interface. And that graphical user interface will be installed in the handset. And that handset will need to access the secure element. However, there are protection mechanisms to only allow access to the secure element to um, trustworthy applications. In the simplified framework, we have created the rules, the access rules to allow that to happen. When we talk about payment services, we need to actually define the parameters that need to be installed in the application along with the personal data. Personal data such as the name of the cardholder, uh, also the expiration date, and basically all of the information that you, you see today on a plastic card. That data is sent from the financial institution to the so-called data preparation bureau which will make sure that that data is created um, uh, into the right format, a format that can be understood by the payment application in the secure element. So we can assume by now that we have a secure element that is set up with the right applications, with the right keys, and we have the data that is ready to be sent to the secure element. So how do we send that data? Well, basically that's when the TSMs come in. The TSMs are the trusted service managers and they act on behalf of two entities. On one side, you have the financial institution and that will be using the service provider TSM and then you have on the other side, the SEI TSM, which will act on behalf of the owner of the secure element issuer. So you also need to think about establishing business relationships between the service provider and the secure element issuer in order to agree on the level of access that you will have to that secure element. So in Global Platform, you have three different levels of control. So you, that can go from uh, getting uh, full access to the secure element to getting partial access or controlled access. So those options uh, are available in the specifications. Nevertheless, you need to define which one do you need. And so that's where the framework provides clarity because by answering two or three business questions, you can very easily locate the configuration that makes the most sense in your case. And the um, other entity that we need to take into account is the controlling authority. When you are setting up the secure element, you need to make sure that the keys used to transport the data from the data preparation bureau down to the secure element are well protected and they are confidential. That means that only the financial institution must know those keys and the secure element issuer uh, must uh, provide mechanisms for the financial institution to set up those keys uh, in the secure element. And the controlling authority is there to support that key setup mechanism. So all of this needs to work end to end and any decision that you take along the chain, for instance, in the secure element, um, and just to give you an example, you have, for instance, three types of secure elements. So depending on the type of secure element that you choose, your um, options to use uh, different over the air channels will change. And so therefore, changing one parameter on one side of the value chain or the ecosystem will impact the others. So this is where the framework brings value because uh, we no longer need to study all of the global platform specifications. Today, um, we've been working in, the, in creating that framework for about two years. 
and we have actually studied more than a thousand pages of specifications to narrow down the options to give you the uh, possibility to have um, self-contained configuration that will be no more than 30 pages. So I think the value that has been provided by the global platform members through the work done within the end-to-end -end, uh, working group initiative is really big and service providers will benefit from there. So what are the benefits that you can expect from the simplified framework? Well, to understand you also need to look at the uh, standard structure of any project. Regardless of the type of project that you will be um, starting, you will go through all of these phases. The first phase is the project scoping phase, which is a technical phase. This is where you need to make all the technical decisions for your own project. So as I said previously, you need to define your secure element profile based on the business agreements that you have uh, established with the secure element issuer. And also you need to define the processes that you will use to deploy your applications through your TSM and how the TSM will interconnect with the other TSMs. So this project scoping phase can be very lengthy. And in the framework, we have actually reduced that to two or three questions. Once you have answered those questions, that project scoping phase will be dramatically reduced because we have removed all of the options. And so therefore, if you are a service provider that wants to get started very quickly, then the these uh, configurations can be of great benefit. The configurations guarantee functionality, so they will uh, explain you how to perform service deployment, but uh, they will do more than that. They will allow you to uh, manage the life of your applications. So, for instance, what happens when a consumer changes handset? What are the processes? What are the notifications that need to be put in place in order to guarantee the continuity of the service. What happens if someone wants to suspend or resume a service? So we have actually created a self-contained configuration that goes from service deployment with a full set of lifecycle management processes that work end to end. And all of those decisions have been taken uh, with the experience of the Global Platform members. Um, so the project scoping phase can be dramatically reduced. Um, obviously, if you need a project that needs specific features, well, then in that case, you can still access the global platform specifications and then create a specific configuration. But if you just want to get started, you can just take the configuration as is and you can um, uh, consult the vendors that implement the framework because as everything is predefined, the products can also be uh, uh, pre-implemented and pre-tested. So development, testing, and integration are greatly simplified uh, thanks to these uh, default configurations. Thanks for watching, and if you want to get more information, you can use the links below to access the white paper on the framework or actually access the framework specifications. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter.